Are you like me and do you hate wired gaming controllers being forced to be tethered into your console or PC? Do you wish you could practice your 30 hit combos from anywhere in your home? I'm pooping. And most importantly, why am I sitting upside down? Well, I made what I believe is the first wireless fighting game controller. This is a leverless controller that also has a trackpad in it to work as a mouse. Even if fighting games are not your thing, do stick around because I think there's a lot that this platform can offer and a lot of things it can be adapted to. We're combining trackpads and controllers, so I think there's a lot here and you should stick around and find out more. Real quick before the video starts, we first need to thank our wonderful video sponsor, JLC PCB. This project was actually made using EDZ EDA, which is JLC PCB's EDA, online EDA tool, and making use of JLC PCB's full color silkscreen service. As you can see on the PCBs I made, they have a full color print on top of it. This is an image that I used and I put it into EDZ EDA and JLC PCB was able to print it directly on the circuit board for me. Honestly, this is really cool and it brought the whole project together. JLC PCB is also having what they call engineer day as part of their appreciation for engineers. This is a month long event from September 5th to October 5th of 2024, where you can get up to $55 off in coupons, bulk order discounts, and a chance to win a $150 Amazon gift card. So check out my easy EDA project and a link to JLC PCB in the description below. And thank you again to them for sponsoring this video. So first things first, why did I make this? Well, Two main reasons. First one is that I've been actually getting into fighting games lately, and I find leverless controllers, which is this style of controller, to be kind of the best way to play it. Now the issue is that a lot of leverless controllers are very expensive and they're wired. And I know that wired is a good way to play, especially if you're a more competitive player, but I'm casual. I want to sit back on my couch and play. So I found there really wasn't any wireless options, so I made my own. Second thing is that in my last framework handheld video, I mentioned that I wanted to take a step back and explore controller and work on that before I make a second iteration of the project. I don't want to spoil too much, but obviously this is combining a controller and a trackpad all in one. The way that it's built firmware side, it would be very easy to take information from the trackpad and bind it to something like a right analog stick. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But anyway, this was just a sidetrack on the, the whole journey of making that second iteration. So do stick around. I think you'll learn a lot more. And you know, I'm gonna post all my firmware and everything for free. So you should be able to easily adapt this to whatever you want. One of the best things about this controller, honestly, is actually how cheap it is. I was able to put this whole thing together for a little less than 40 bucks. And if you emit the trackpad and the, the printing on the PCB, you could probably get it down to like the $25 range, which is, really cheap if you especially if you compare it to those those higher end systems of course this is far from like a tournament ready controller but you know that's what i not what i want i'm the lazy bones i just want to lay back on my couch and play casually and as far as latency goes i haven't had any problems i'm probably not good enough to sense those latency issues so i am happy with it as it is. <laughs> Let's quickly talk about the design. This is a standard leverless layout, except for that I push the buttons a little bit further apart. I think it makes my hands a little less cramped. So I'm sorry to those hardcore gamers out there that are unhappy about this layout. I'm not actually sorry, this is better. <laughs> for the trackpad, it is on the right side here. And you th would think this might get in the way of when you're playing. Although I do find when you're playing, your hands hover over the trackpad. So it has never been an issue where I accidentally touch it while playing. That being said, it's a separate device, so moving the mouse while you press the A button or whatever, it doesn't really make a difference. But then actually now to elaborate about the mouse itself. So yeah, this is a mouse. This trackpad is a mouse cursor. Why would you want that on a controller? Well, what I have pictured in my mind was having Steam up on my TV, me laying back on the couch and being able to navigate with this trackpad makes it easier to, to navigate on my computer and launch games. That's kind of the only reason I added it. Of course, it does coincide with a future project I'm working on as far as adding trackpads, but having it work as both a controller and a mouse was very important for this project, especially for the future project. All right, let's get down to like the meat on how this works. This is based on an ESP32, and currently it is Bluetooth, and it's using a library I found called Composite HID. A composite HID device is something that enumerates as several different devices and are both HID. HID is a human interface device, which would be things like game pads, controllers, keyboards, those sorts of things. So a composite HID device in this case is a controller and a mouse. This does make it show up on your computer as a generic controller. 
So for using it with Steam, you'll have to bind the input specifically with Steam input, which is not a big deal. But if you want to use it in other applications, you may need to use some third party software called X360 CE, basically an Xbox controller emulator because that makes it use something called X input. It's a whole lot to explain. But currently I'm working on actually a dongle solution. So something will have lower latency than generic Bluetooth. Uh, and that dongle solution would be able, to be able to make it enumerate as an Xbox 360 controller. So you won't have these issues with binding, but that's for the future. I'm still working on that, but it, I mean, at least it seems promising for now. So I will follow up eventually with that. So let's talk about customization. I wanted this thing to be as customizable as possible. So I added in some features. If I go ahead and turn it on, you'll see that it is RGB. And if you edit the firmware, you can add in whatever RGB modes you have. But for now, I have two different modes. One is just this basic rainbow. Another one, if you hold R3 and L3, will turn it into a kind of a per key thing. It'll flash purple twice, and then it'll light up whichever one I'm pressing. Pretty cool. It'll only actually do this if you're connected to a device, by the way. So if you're not connected to anything, pressing the buttons won't do anything. Another thing to mention is something that I incorporated called SOCD, which if you aren't familiar with, is something called Simultaneous Opposing Cardinal Direction. And what that has to do with is the fact that you cannot press left and right or up and down at the same time if you were using something like a D-pad or an analog stick. So how you would have to deal with that with a leverless controller like this one is by filtering those outputs. So I have four modes in here. The first one is called neutral. And what neutral SOCD is means if I press left and right at the same time, it'll equal nothing, right? It won't press either. The second one I have is called up priority, which means left and right at the same time is actually neutral, but then up and down at the same time makes it up always. The third one is called first input SOCD. And what first input is, is it'll keep track of which button was pressed first and it'll ignore the other one. And what the last one is, is called last input SOCD. And what that'll do is it'll only switch to the newest input. So if I'm holding right and I press left, it'll switch to left even if both are held. It's about the order in that they're pressed in. So for SOCD, you would just press start and select at the same time. It'll flash a color corresponding which with its mode. Blue means first input SOCD. Purple means last input SOCD. Red is neutral and yellow is up priority. So yeah, simple, straightforward. But let's talk about some of the physical customization options. As you can see, this is a clear top. This is acrylic that I ordered. Of course, you don't actually need to do that. You can 3D print a top plate like I did with this one. And I even added these little button tops on here to kind of make it feel more like a Sandwa switch, which is like the old school arcade buttons. You don't need to do it. You could make it completely flat. You can do a lot of different things. Beyond that, you can even 3D print your own button tops. These were purchased, but with 3D printed ones, for example, this one, I even played around and made them shine through. So they're a little bit thinner in these specific parts and you can actually see the letters through them. It's a little hard in the bright camera lighting, but you can see them a bit. But yeah, so if I go ahead and actually turn this one off, you will see, you can't see them anymore. They're just regular buttons. But that's if you wanna go ahead and 3D print your own buttons. Those will be in my uh, step file, so you're more than welcome to, to play around with that. You may wanna change the font. I figured out that font is kind of ugly. Another thing to mention too, added on top of there, this is using hot swap Gateron low profile key switches. So you see there's actually nothing holding in the key switch. So we'll come out with the keys, but these are Gateron silvers, which are kind of like your gaming style ones. They have the shortest throw and I like them for this use case. So you can pop in whatever Gateron low profile key switch you want. It'll just slot into place, boom. And then uh, my keycap goes on. One last thing is checking the battery life is pretty easy. It will actually report it over Bluetooth to the device it's connected to, so your device will know its battery life. But if you really quickly wanna check, you just press the power button, it'll glow a certain color. Green, like it is right now, means it's from 60 to 100% battery. Yellow would mean it's from 30 to 60% battery. And red means it's zero to 30% battery. Just something quick and easy to do. If you wanna go ahead and turn it off, what you do is press and hold the power button for three seconds, it'll flash red and then it turns off and it goes into a sort of sleep mode where you just tap the button to turn it back on. Nice and easy. And there you go. Another thing real quick too. This was printed on the Bamboo Labs P1S. That's how I was able to do these, these colors. But there is a setting for the bottom layer infill pattern and you can play with that. 
And that's how you get these kind of cool design on this one. This was printed on the smooth PEI plate. I did a, also did a similar thing with this one where it's a, uh, a circle, circular pattern. So yeah, recommend playing with that actually if you print big flat things. It's kind of a fun little feature. So I realized this whole video might come off as like a commercial for this thing I made, but yeah, I mean, I hope it doesn't too much. I'm just really excited by this and I've actually been using it a lot, which has been fun. And I highly recommend make one if it's something you're interested in, or even if it's something you think you might be interested in, you know? The files are available. I have my GitHub posted in the link below. There should be a link to all the, the 3D models, including this step file if you want to edit it yourself, which I also highly recommend. Customize it as much as you want. That's a big part of this thing. Again, this video came together with the help of JLC PCB. So if you do want to order one of these PCBs, a link for my EZDA will be in the description below, as well as a couple of links for JLC PCB, and you can take part of their engineer day deal that's going on right now. So check that out. And again, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you want, if there's anything about this project that you like or want to see or any other ideas for projects, you know, I'm always open to it. So thanks for watching and subscribe, do that thing. Click the, the button. It helps me. It makes me feel better about myself. Bigger number being more better. <laughs>